The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome to the August 9th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary day and an extraordinary weekend, an extraordinary life. And the easiest way to do that, it's just to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But way more important than that, during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial it in right now, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. Rifle off a quick email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question in, in our Tiger's Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow off 1, 2, 3, 123 points. The downside, 26, 253 is the print. The S&P off 23. The NASDAQ 185. That's a little over 1%. Russell down a little over 1%, 18 points as well. Um, spot volatility index up uh, 9%, a buck 50, trading at 1841. Uh, gold is uh, flat, basically off a buck. Silver is flat. Lights recruit is not flat. It's up two buckaroonies. Uh, leading the charge, the upside. Nevro Corp. That's about 11 bucks or 17 percent. Uh, pay Low City Holdings up uh, 8 percent or 8 bucks. Shopify up 10 bucks, 3 percent. To the downside, leading the charge dollar wise, 28 bucks. Amazon DXC Technology off 16. Google off 15. Nectar Therapeutics down about 10 bucks, but that's 32 percent to the downside. So Let's, uh, let's go to our first question that came in. This came in from Craig. He wanted to take a look at the intermediate time period for Alcoa. Ticker symbol there is AA. And so if we take a look at Alcoa out here, just simply in taking a look at where price is trading in relationship to its uh, daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly task market profiles, price is trading below all of them. So that's not a good scene. Now, Craig is looking for an intermediate term time frame. If I didn't say that, if I did, well, then I'm just repeating myself. But at this stage here, so intermediate for my I thinking, you know, more along the time, more along the lines of weekly, monthly, but we're going to take a look at all the time frames out here. So, okay, we'll take a look at this price and below support. What's that mean? Jelly bean. Well, we got to go really take a look at Stevie's other charts out here because we want to take a look at patterns that help us to identify bottoms. So if we go take a look at Elko out here, here's one of the things we know on a daily chart. We can see that when it topped out here most recently, let me get my cursor out here. That's from the trading session of July 18th. It makes that uh, beautiful singing in the key of G, Stevie Wonder, part of the Basil Chapman wave out there. When you get to that letter G or wave number seven out there, you got to be on the lookout it's a signal why it works man i don't know i just know that it does and we pay attention to it so it makes that top that way then it starts heading lower and what it was doing about uh, a week ago or so started moving lower with less relative energy then stevie's system automatically builds those lines in there it says okay we've got to be paying attention now what elco has done out here craig it is trying to form a bottom how do we know that well Two of the last five trading sessions have been hammer candles. The first hammer candle on August the 5th, that's a bullish reversal signal out there. Now, price was below its TAS market profiles. 
an aggressive trader would have tried to take a position on a daily basis right then and there. Stevie would have said, you know, this could just simply bounce up to Stevie's red line. It did neither because the next day it tested the bottom of that hammer candle. Okay, so didn't get any follow through. Then what happens on the trading session of August 7th? Another hammer candle forms. Then the next day, that was yesterday, that move created another bullish reversal signal out here. So what we know on a daily basis, if you're out here fishing, Craig, I understand why you're fishing. Now, what you'd really like to see here, prices, as we said, trading back below the daily profile, not really a good scene out here. Of course, you were talking about intermediate term time frame. I on a daily basis, you really want to see this close above 2079 to suggest that a change in trend or at least a move up to 2524 would be um, an outcome, a likely outcome. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, well, here's what we also know. We know that price is moving lower, doing less relative energy out there. And since the intermediate term time frame is a time frame that you're really most interested in, I'm going to suggest you wait for a bullish reversal signal now that wouldn't come or the earliest that would come would be let's say next friday out there but you're looking at intermediate term now here gives a potential first resistance level on the way up is 2892 let's go take a look at the monthly time frame chart just for the heck of it and uh, see if we see anything out here and we don't see anything only a wave count number four to the downside uh, forming that high with that Rhodes momentum indicator top out there. So pay attention to the weekly and the daily. Daily is telling you it's trying to form a bottom. Now make the weekly prove itself to you, Craig, before you go ahead and fire away. So thanks for writing in. Hey, folks, I want to hear from you, too. But let's go to the markets. Let's try to do the markets. Then I see we've got to take a look at what questions about the S&P and the dollar and so forth. So we'll take a look at those items. But let's start with the markets, see what they've done here. Now, as you may know, if you've been listening to the show, we've certainly been paying attention to some of the intraday time frame charts out there. One of those is the two-hour time frame chart. Now, the reason is uh, we talked about that wave number seven. That was letter G in Alcoa, how that identified a top out here. Well, the two-hour chart identified the bottom, the low so far. The low of the week was with wave number seven. That's letter G at the bottom of my screen. Now, what took place yesterday? What took place yesterday was the market coming into the close formed a beautiful Gartley sell pattern, which was not confirmed until the equity futures contract opened back up at the open because there was little, there was this little gap to the downside. It wasn't really little, but there was a gap to the downside. So you have, and plus price had made it right up to resistance. We had been talking about the 29.33.50 level. Yeah, price got just above it right at four o'clock. And, um, but, but the reality is, hey, you've got a Gertley sell pattern. Now, what price has not done is pulled back to its level of support, its level of support being 2831.50. We are in, this bar, by the way, does not complete until 2 p.m., uh, but it appears what is going on here is it's trying to form a TD setup nine count pattern. Now, if it does, you wouldn't get a confirmation of that till 4 p.m., so not anything that you can trade off of, and there's no guarantee that this is the pattern that will form out here. It's just what is present at the moment. So where is it that the ES Mini maybe is headed to if it's not going to bottom with that TD setup nine count? For that, we just take a look at any Gartley pattern. So all Gartley patterns, and we're going to go into the break here, so I'm going to have to finish this up when we come back, but all Gartley patterns have an A to B equals CD. You can see the one-to-one -one price projection here at the 2937 level we use that as a guideline we know it's formed we know it completed because it had that bearish reversal signal now we take a look at fibonacci retracements it has not even made the 0 0.382 retracement we'll be right back If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, oh, one, one last thing uh, for Craig out there on Alcoa. This is a chart here, a monthly time frame chart uh, for Alcoa going back to 1997. And it's got its horizontal trading ranges on here, both the monthly and the uh, weekly. And another reason for Craig or anybody to be taking a look at Alcoa to confirm the bottoming patterns that we looked at out there is the fact that price is sitting right in 1941. 1934 has had the largest number of closes or opens on a monthly time frame going back to 1997 there have been 20 right within a few pennies of that uh, level and 21.29 on the uh, weekly time frame if price breaks through this area there's no bullish reversal signal uh, that uh, Craig is looking for then price could get all the way back down to the lows in 2009 in that 991 level out there so back to the uh, Gartley pattern so when you have a Gartley cell we've got a, an absolute Gartley cell there's really five different outcomes the first four are the ones that are on our screen the ones that we pay attention to so the first outcome of this pattern would be a 0.382 retracement, which is 28.77. Price has not gotten there. If price doesn't get there and these highs are taken out, it just, and so far, our interpretation of this Gertley sells, this is a very strong bullish market out here. Um, th that's the only message. The, the, the normal retracement of this pattern, and I'm not saying it's not going to happen, I'm just saying we're gonna take a look at the chart right now, and at 119, and this pattern went into effect last night at 6.01 p.m. when we had that gap it really was at six of course it was really by eight o'clock because it's a two hour time frame chart and that gap no it, it, because the gap yeah that because the gap was open uh, for that two hour time frame out here so um and to not make a 0 0.382 retracement look if you're short and you're going on the weekend you, you, you gotta see price below 28.77 otherwise you're 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 playing with fire uh so 
those are the outcomes out here. If I take a look at the TAS market profiles for the two-hour time frame, just simply so we can get a feel for what they are doing out here, where is price? Price is right now sitting in between the, um, well, it has bounced all the way up to the center line of the box. That's 29.23, fairly equally distributed box out there. So I won't say there's a benefit to buyers or sellers, just that there's buyers and sellers hovering at 29.23, uncertain as to what to do. So that's what's going on from a short-term standpoint. Um, uh, Coda had asked about the megaphone pattern on the S&P 500. Are you referring to my megaphone? Uh, but uh, no, you're not. But let's just take a look at the S&P 500 the following way out here. Here's what we know about the ES Mini, because that's really, and, and I'll switch over to the S&P, but Coda, I'm going to be able to provide you the better information uh, by taking a look at the equity futures contract out there. So here's what we know at this stage of the game. First of all, uh, if we take a look at the retracement off of the bottom, it basically stopped at about the 0.618 retracement level as well, 29.32. So it's a normal counter trend rally move out here is to get up to the 0.618 level and it has since sold off. But of course, you and I just really focused on that two hour chart. We're not seeing much of a failure at this stage of the game, not as of 121. Okay, so we know that. We also know that the TAS market profiles formed a brand new one it formed above price let's get rid of the uh, let's get rid of the uh, Fibonacci retracement out here let's take a look at our new profiles code and see how they formed above the top of price so the general meaning there is this is a bearish pattern but it also means that price could or should bounce up to 29.77 before we so that's where the counter trend rally should fail at this stage of the game out here so 29.77 if we put those retracements back up there that gets us to the 0.786 retracement that is a third outcome of any type of a Gartley buy pattern now we don't have a Gartley buy pattern here on the daily chart and the reason that we don't have a Gartley buy pattern on the daily time frame chart we take a look at the ES mini is because we did not get a bullish reversal candle out here so at this stage, then, Coda, it's possible price doesn't make it to 29.77. It's possible that 29.48, Stevie's green line, is the end of the road of that counter trend rally out there. But between 29.48 and 29.77 is what I would be looking at. I don't know if that makes sense to you from Stevie's megaphone aspect. But at this stage here, when we put this together, and we combined that. Remember yesterday we spent some time on the New York Stock Exchange, and we definitely spent time on the spot volatility index. We want to become aficionados of that. If we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, what we don't like, what bulls would not like out here, is the fact that the advanced decline oscillator turned down at this descending trend line that's been in place since July the 3rd out there. So it's still below zero. And when the advanced decline oscillator is below zero, Coda, there is only one way that Stevie will communicate to you what it is communicating to us. And that is that sellers are in control. So sellers are in control of the New York Stock Exchange. We can then go take a look at what the spot volatility index is doing. It is above the 50-day exponential moving average. That's 1551. We're trading at 1788. That is also a bad scene out here. So with regard to what we take a look at going on in the ES Mini out there, the New York Stock Exchange, where price is trading on the spot volatility index, where Stevie's green line is at on the daily time frame chart, this is still a counter trend rally. What we're trying to figure out is where does that rally end out here? And today, a light trading volume day, I don't know what the proper interpretation of that is. Uh, we just know that there's been less than a 0.382 retracement of a effective Gertley sell pattern that is out there. So I hope that helps you out um with regard to with regard to that now you also wanted to take a look at the uh, dollar the u.s dollar index out here so to do that um let's take a look at where the u.s dollar index is trading in relationship to its uh, TAS market profiles let's at least begin there and so here's what we know we know that the uh, price is trading below and i'm going to focus on the daily time frame that's right panel well it's going to be the full panel right now so here's what we know we know that the u.s dollar index topped out here, by the way, on August the 1st. Now, when it topped, using the daily time frame chart, it generated that TD setup nine count pattern. It was bar number eight. Remember, it's bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine out here. So it, it, it effectively generated a nice 
a topping signal. Wave counts, where were we? We were in only wave number five. That's okay. Remember, there's a handful of patterns, four or five, that are going to be effective at helping us to identify tops and bottoms out there. And that's really, that's really the skill set that you and I want to be able to master. And what we also know, Coda, is that when, when, when price does make a top, that our first expectation should not be that it's the end of the run, just that price is going to go down and test support. Now, for support, you and I use really two different things out here. We use our TAS market profiles. As you can see and as we looked at, price is trading slightly below the bottom of the profile. So that is uh, directionally bearish out here. It says sellers, in essence, are in control. But price had pushed down right to its prior breakout level, 96. And that's the real key area, 96.985. That was tested. That was rejected on August 6th. I remember... We were looking at that. We were saying, look at how the U.S. dollar index has held support. But what it hasn't done is it needs to get above Stevie's green line. That's 97.58. If it does that, then it continued to run higher, at least to 97.81. And the top of its profile, 98.40, would be the call out there. But that's not the call. It's trading in between. It's kind of like in a, it's between support and resistance. Resistance either the bottom of the box or Stevie's green line, either of those. But above support, which is the breakout level out here for the U.S. dollar index on a daily time frame chart. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today the Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So one of our denners, Peter in the den, wanted to take a look at gold priced in the other major currencies. Actually, we have dollar, the U.S. dollar. That's the left-hand panel. Uh, panel number two from the left is gold priced in euros. Next to that is uh, gold in yen. And next to that is gold in Great British Pounds. And his question was, he was curious as to whether they were trading at all-time highs in those currencies. And the answer is, uh, in, the ter in terms of euros and in terms of uh, pounds, the answer is yes. Uh, they are trading at uh, all-time highs. Uh, in terms of uh, yen, it's made a slightly higher high. Uh, euros is getting up towards that level. That level would be right around 1,391 euros for an ounce of uh, gold out here. But you can see that uh, in terms of U.S. dollars, well away, well, well away from its all-time high out there. Now, the cool thing is, longer term, what's the message here for gold? The message is this is not how tops form for gold and gold priced in dollars out here. So, uh, you know, you can just clearly see traders around the globe uh, doing what they can to get into U.S. oriented assets or out of their currencies and certainly uh, stock up here. So that's what's going on, Peter, when we take a look at uh, gold priced in those currencies and uh, always happy to assist there. But, but markets do not, they will all top at approximately the same time. And in the case of uh, U.S. dollars, you can see we're, we're way away from uh, that level out there. So um, so longer term, that doesn't mean we don't have a pullback or, or things along those lines. But uh, so hopefully that uh, hopefully that helps you out. Let me get rid of this chart here. I don't really need that. Taking up uh, time and space. Save that page. No. Okay. So there was another question that had come in earlier in the day, and it was if I could re-review um, re -review the fact that that uh, lower interest rates, which is what you hear the folks on the boob tube talking about, do not result in higher prices in the stock market. So it's just a matter of just taking a look at the facts out here. So here are the facts. I went ahead and just put this together. It's real. It's really. It's it's really pretty quick um, out here when we take a look at this. And we just. It's just really about determining myth versus fact. You know, and the myth that would be out there that people are pushing is that if interest rates rise, uh, the stock market will go down or it would have to be vice versa. If interest rates decline, the stock market will go up. Well, you and I have a set of tools where we can determine whether there's any legitimacy to this. Is this a myth or a fact? Well, here is our correlation tool. And I snapped this uh, probably around 11 o'clock this morning or so. Uh, the top of this chart is the 30-year Treasury bond rate. And the bottom of the chart is the S&P 500, or the, the next level. And the very bottom is the correlation tool. Now, correlation tool, I have this set to the smallest correlating time period uh, that I could use, which is a five-day period. And on the correlation tool, what this does is it looks at that average over the last five days. And if there's a directional correlation, meaning interest rates go up and the S&P goes up, then the bar will be above zero. Now here we're taking, you can see the majority of these bars are above zero. If the fact was, the fact was that if interest rates rise and the stock market was gonna go down, all these bars would be below zero. So I ask you with your own little eyes or big eyes, what does this tell you? This tells you so far myth. Now let's not stop with the 30 year rate. Let's go take a look at the 10 year T note out here. So again, the top portion is the 10 year rate. The next portion, the S&P 500. And after that, the correlation. As you can see out here, there's no inverse correlation. It's mostly correlated. If the interest rates are rising, the stock market is rising out there. We don't have to stop there. We can just simply look at the five-year T-node rate. And we take a look at this. We have the same outcome. So we've looked at three different interest rate vehicles out here. And they all communicate the same thing. And that same thing is what the big picture tells us. So but here's the 13-week T-bill out here. Now, the 13-week T-bill, again, set at a five-time period out here, it's it looks to me like it's 50-50, 60-40, something like that. But much more clear when we take a look at the five-year rate, the 10-year rate, the 30-year rate out there. And when we take a look at long-term out here, go back for the last quarter of a century, go back to 1990, 
1992 to 1995 when we had interest rates rising. This is using the 13-week T-bill. This is the top portion of the chart. The bottom of the chart is the S&P 500. And yes, you can say that when Trump comes on the air and, and wants to bash the Federal Reserve, all Powell has to do is just show him this set of charts out there. He doesn't have to talk. He could just say, you know what, let me give you a set of charts so that everybody understands what interest rates do to the stock market. Here, October 98 to October 2000. Take a look, the S&P rose by 30%. We don't have to stop there. We go to 2003 to 2007. Interest rates are rising. The stock market, the S&P rose by 44%. And we can, of course, take a look at since uh, September of 2015, in essence, through February of 2019 out there. And what did we see? The S&P rising by, I guess, 45. Maybe I don't know if I have my, my yeah, 45%. Yeah, 44% last time, 45% this time. It's really equivocal. Basically, what the folks on the tube are doing is giving you a bunch of BS. It was all before Steve shared with you the actual facts out here. So there you go. So it's not unusual that Powell <laughs> reduced rates, and on top of that, another Trump. But it's not, it, and 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 the market started moving lower out there, and people are asking for more rating, uh, de, more rate reductions out there. I just want to, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you saw me do that. Just hit myself upside the head with a two by four. Are you crazy out there? Yeah, they're, they're so full of their own stuff. Can you believe, you know, these guys are paid pretty well in the media. Can you believe that nobody, and they got technical traders on there. I wonder where their head's at. Because I, I haven't heard anybody come out and just share the actual facts out there and the actual reality. But why that is, I don't know. Okay, enough of that. Let's go to our next question that came in. This is coming in from Brent in Martinez, California. Brent wants to take a look at uh, oil and uh, natural gas. So let's take a look at uh, both those uh, for him. Let's start with the natural gas contract out here. Let me, uh, oh, geez, that didn't work. Give me a second here to punch that in properly, natural gas, September. And let's also go take a look at our profiles out here for natural gas, um, U19, there we go. And so here's, when I, when I take a look at the natural gas set of charts out here, uh, if we just simply take a look at the, the, the daily weekly profiles, Brent, we can see prices trading below both of them. So now it's really, so sellers in essence are the ones that are in control would be that meaning. And 2.183 is the bottom of that uh, daily time frame box out here. And I don't have any new profile or anything that is forming. Okay, so we know that. Um, yeah, price has been, you know, kind of trading, chopping around sideways. In essence, that's what our five-hour and our two-hour chart is showing us out here. If we look to the daily time frame, you know, is there any kind of a bottoming signal out here? And I just don't have one. If we do the wave counts out here, and we're going to have to, you know, finish this up uh, at the break, only in wave number five to the downside. Let's come back. Let's take a look at the weekly. Let's try to wrap our head around natural gas, light, sweet, crude. And of course, I want to hear from you. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's take a look at uh, natural gas. We, we began looking at the uh, daily time frame chart here. And what we don't have is any kind of uh, any kind of uh, bottom signal that you and I like to look for. I don't have an A to B equals CD to the downside that I could really paint in here. We're in wave number five. That's letter E. Um, and so let's go to a longer term time frame long term let's go to the weekly let's look at the weekly and the monthly first let me do the monthly and the monthly says this the monthly shows that um, uh, the monthly shows that this month should be the eighth bar of a TD setup nine count now what you like about that is the last time that natural gas bottomed it was with bar number eight now that happened to be back in March of 2016 so maybe this is a repeat performance here of course we won't know if this pattern is going to complete and generate itself until uh, the end of September out there but at least at this stage um, it's forming a similar type of a bottom to a significant bottom back in 2016. So a reason to be looking. So then that says, all right, so we know the daily doesn't really have the bottoming signal we want, but what's the weekly chart show us out here? The intermediate term time frame. Well, what it shows us is that it topped with a TD setup nine count. So that's the high out here. If we do our wave count from that, we can see that uh, this week is extended into wave number six. Uh, wave number seven, the earliest it could happen would be two weeks from now. Two weeks from now. So I would prefer to wait to see, you know, a seventh wave move. Uh, that would be letter G, form inside natural gas. And if that's what's really going on, this choppiest, this choppiness area out here, um, you know, maybe here to stay for for a while. At least a couple, at least a couple of weeks out here, um, you know, for, for natural gas. So I just don't see the bottom. We can see Stevie's red line, or we can see the top of the weekly profile has acted as resistance. So that's helpful to us. But now let's just say Brent maybe is interested, or somebody else is interested in a shorter term trade out here with regard to natural gas. We can see on the 60. Well, that's light sweet crude. Sorry. Let's let's uh, let's just take a look at this chart here for natural gas. What do we know, Brent? The 60 minute time frame chart seems. To to be providing you and I with the best uh, support level signal out here. So from a trading standpoint, the last time that we got a TD setup nine count, 
to the upside is where we have our support. And that's at 2.073. We can see that even earlier this morning, that level was tested. And in essence, it held. There was a slight close just below that, but it didn't stay below that. That was at 9 o'clock. It didn't stay below 2.073 for very long, you know, and has rallied off of that. We can also see that this resistance level at 2.16 out here, that's, that's a pretty key area of resistance. Price has not been able to get above that. But if you were playing it intraday to the upside or maybe the next time price comes down to 207 and holds out there, then you're watching 216 as a key level that price would. So that's really the range that I see out here when I look at the uh, different charts for natural gas. Price trading between uh, at the bottom around 207 and a resistance around 216 out there. So that's what I see now. You had asked about light sweet crude as well. And the light sweet crude, the, and, and you had identified, identified in your, uh, in your email that the daily charts were better. Or, and, and you're right. You're absolutely right. Now, if we take a look at light sweet crude, here's what we know. We know that it topped out here with a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. It does that on April 23rd. And if we start doing our wave count, well, it gets to wave number six back on uh, June, the uh, the week, uh, the daily chart. We're looking at June 5th, 2019 out here. Uh, and then it makes uh, four waves of the upside. And then we're in wave number three of the downside. Or if we just extend from the uh, top out here from April 23rd, uh, that'll take us to wave number seven, singing in the key of G. And since then, and that completed an A to B equals CD pattern. However, no bullish reversal candle. So it becomes really hard to say the A to B equals CD pattern has uh, taken hold. But price is trading above Stevie's green line, 54.40. It's actually red. But if price can close above 54.40, Brent, what we ought to see is a move. Let's get back to Light Sweet Crude and take a look at its profiles out here. What we ought to see, Light Sweet Crude, is top out at a brand new daily profile that is attempting to form right now. And the top of that, daily is 56.33 and the bottom of the weekly is 52.28. That's the key area of resistance. Closing above that would most certainly be bullish out there and say that that wave number seven or letter G uh, was the real deal for light sweet crude. If I take a look at the weekly time frame for light sweet crude and we try to find some type of bottom, all that we can find is support. And support, oh wait a minute, is this is the that's the wrong contract. I got hold on a second here. We got to change this. We got to change this up. Jeez Louise out here. Okay. Hey, Steve, -O, it does help if you're going to analyze something to make sure you're analyzing the right thing. Okay, so here, here's what we know about Light Sweet Crude from a weekly standpoint. Support is 50.05. Now, price has been down to that level or near that level three different times. The most recent this week didn't get down there now you may have a bullish hammer candle right at support out here but price on a weekly basis not above stevie's red line 56.38 but if it can close above that on a weekly um we gave you the numbers on the daily again that run to the 59 59 ish area would really be its message out there so that's what i see in taking a look at light sweet crude if i go over to the short term time frame for light sweet crude and really what you look for here is you look for resistance levels to fail those are the green horizontal lines on my screen out here so what we can see is the first one failed that was at 5276 the second one, I don't have it spread all the way across, but you can see it visually, 53.56. That says that where price is headed to, on a 30-minute time frame, the next resistance level being 55.14. Now, the caution, as we speak right now on a 30-minute time frame chart at 148, is the fact that this is now the bar following bar 9 of a TD setup 9 count. And we know that the bar following bar 9, if that's a higher high than bars 8 or 9, that this can be a topping signal. So at 149 in the afternoon, you don't want to chase this. And instead, you want to try to buy the uh, first pullback, the ideal pullback on a 30-minute basis. If you're convinced that the weekly and the uh, daily time frame charts are signaling a possible buy -a bullish bottom, that wave number G and so forth, then right now it would be 52.96. That would be the level, some type of pullback to that area of support from a 30-minute time frame for light sweet crude. So Brent, uh, thanks for writing in. I hope that uh, helps answer your question with regard to both natural gas and light sweet crude. Lee B writes in, he says, uh,
Hey, Steve. Hey, Lee. Can you look at glue? G-L-U-U -U out here. We can. So let's go take a look at, uh, oh, well, let's put it in here. I don't know how long glue has been trading. I'm just looking at their profiles out here. But let's go to the three different time frames. So the question that uh, Lee has is you're looking to buy in for a long-term holdout here. So here's what we know about um, glue, which is glue mobile. Well below, got got to schnookered last week, uh, and uh, and that schnookering took price down to the to the center of its quarterly profile, four dollars and twenty nine cents out there, bullish in structure. So a bullish level held. Uh, if it doesn't hold, if price continues to move lower, three thirty six would be the next move to the downside. But what we want to see out here as we come back from this break, folks, is did glue G L double U. Did it form some type of bottoming signal on the daily time frame when it had a gap to the downside with big volume? I don't know. Let's go find out. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at ticker symbol GLUU out here. Lee's looking at a long-term uh, type of uh, holdout here. So here's what we know 
uh, Lee, as we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, we know that it topped with wave number seven. That's letter G. It's why you and I always pay attention to that. Since it's backed off, but what price is not done. So when you top with a pattern, we always look for price to move back to support. So you're thinking long term, price is below the bottom of its bullish structured monthly profile out there. We know that the breakout level uh, for uh, for GLUU took place at 358 on a monthly time frame chart. So 358 has to be the number that you should be thinking about. That's at least what the monthly says. Let's go take a look at the weekly out here, see what we see. So on a weekly time frame chart, we do wave counts to the downside, get to wave number four out here. Uh, this has 366 as a breakout area. So again, this is also suggesting lower price. We don't see a bottom. This did have a short-term bottom on a weekly basis with a TD setup nine count. Lasted for two, four weeks out there. And then last week, you know, just got the kibosh kicked out of it. And on a daily time frame chart, it is true that price was pushing lower, is pushing lower with less relative energy. And you did get a hammer candle a couple days ago. But if this was going to form the bottom, you would see price close over 578. That's the top of its daily profile out there. If that happens, man, then you're going to be dealing with this entire gap out here. But at this stage of the game, you're looking for a long term hold. Stevie says the charts say long term, you need to just be patient and wait to see if price will pull back to that weekly or daily breakout level. Well, folks, it's been a great week. It's been a wild week, to say the least. But I think we have a bunch more wild weeks ahead. And I want to thank you very much for being here. Thank everybody for sending in requests of questions or the guys and gals inside the Tiger's Den uh, and, and the callers that we have out there. It always makes it easier for me. The show runs smoother, mostly because I'm giving you the information that you're asking for. And all we're doing is just reading the chart patterns. We don't care who's tweeting what, who's saying what, what are buyers and sellers saying? What patterns are they making? Hey, I'll tell you a pattern you should make. Just go have a great weekend. And we'll see you again Monday afternoon. Take care, folks.